Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Roysom. What better place to continue our Material Matters mini-series than to discuss profile, more specifically thickness profile. This is a continuation of the last clip, Web 201.69c on thickness measurement. So please see that clip first if you have not already done so. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. Profile is defined as the variation of something across the width of the web, where the something could be basis weight, caliper, density, bagginess, thickness, and so on. Profile is a very useful concept because it tends to remain stable for minutes, to hours, to days, and perhaps for the life of the machine. Profile is a useful concept because it affects many, many issues. Some on the web, some on the wound row. Most methods that can measure thickness can also give thickness profile information. See the last clip for details. One method is a traversing on machine scanner. While scanners do, for the most part, deliver thickness profile information, they're quite expensive and not as accurate as lab measurements. Lab measurements can yield profile information, but it requires more testing labor. Several samples must be gathered from predetermined CD locations across the width of the parent roll. This might be three measurements from the quarter points and center of the web or it could be five or even ten across the wider machines. While this kind of sampling is common and used to deliver averages and standard deviation, the individual readings must also be kept separate to the graph profile information about the parent roll. Finally, the lab gives information slower, perhaps even an hour after the possibly defective material has been made. Still, the lab is the gold standard for profile measurement. While equally spaced samples across the width may be most common, it may not be best for troubleshooting certain problems as I teach in my critical thinking class. For example, if you wanted to know if a roll had heavy ends, you could tailor the sampling to three locations, center and ends, and less at the quarter points where there is less useful information for this problem hypothesis. Simple profile shapes such as smiles, frowns, and tapers are best troubleshooted by sampling strategies that are crafted to fit the hypothesis being tested. Conversely, general profile questions are best answered by the traditional equally spaced sampling. Profile is an essential word in the problem-solving lexicon. It allows us to get started without necessarily defining what the something is. It allows us to correlate something that is important, such as bagginess profile, for example, to something that is easy to measure, such as thickness profile or wound roll hardness profile, as two examples. However, before we finish, we need to explicitly define what that something is. We can do this in one or hopefully two of the following ways. The first and easiest is a statistical correlation of goodness or fit. The second is even more powerful. That is to define the physical mechanism that is operating sometimes called causation.
To finish out our profile language, we can label common shapes such as tapers, smiles, frowns, ridges, valleys, and the less common step as the dominant characteristic of the profile we are studying. Of course, there is nothing to prevent us from having a taper plus a smile or a smile plus a ridge. However, when we see these combination shapes, we might suspect that there are two independent mechanisms operating. Why this shape language is important is beyond mere simple communications with others. It is also essential for one of the most useful of screening tools. The shape tool says that the shape of the problem must resemble the shape of the cause. While I go into this in great detail with examples in my troubleshooting course, you can see an abbreviated version of this in my web 401.10 clip on this All Web Handling channel of YouTube. One very important concept that I teach in my advanced winding class is that winding defects can be classified as tight, loose, taper, and other. An abbreviated list of some of the more common defects is given here, though we cannot possibly cover them in this clip. Instead, what is important to note here is that winding tightness matters for tight, loose, and taper defects that together form a large portion of the defects you will find on wound rolls. The other category includes many operational and maintenance issues, such as wrong width rolls and rough roll edges because your winder is mechanically loose, and so on. So, what does all this classification of winding defects have to do with profile? Well, it has a lot to do with profile if the basis weight or density or thickness profile is not dead level. As shown in the example graph, we have a web maker or converter that makes a web or converts a web that is ever so slightly thinner in the middle than on the edges. The common result will be loose center rolls and tight end rolls. The reason is, is that the winder can only set average tightness. Thickness variation from the web maker or converter, on the other hand, sets the tightness variation. It is not unusual for profile to be more important, or even much more important than the winder TNT settings with regard to the number and type of tight and loose wound roll defects that results. This concept is an advanced concept that is covered in much more detail in my winding school, so all we can do is merely summarize the end result here. The executive summary is this. You can have a tight roll and a loose roll in the same set of rolls. Also, you can have a tight defect and a loose defect in the same wound roll. For example, one end could have bagginess caused by excessive tightness, while the other end of the same roll could have starring caused by excessive looseness. And all of this is caused by the variation of thickness profile from upstream. Winding cannot ever totally solve these problem situations, no matter what the winding machine or what the TNT setting you use or what the taper is. Winding cannot ever totally solve these problem situations, no matter how much your customer and how much your boss wants this. At best, the winder can only minimize the total troubles by careful balancing of the tight and low defects, as I teach in the 
optimization section of my problem solving classes. To do any better, you must leave the winder and correct the profile at its source, such as uneven manufacturing or uneven converting. My baggy web series, Web Tool 1.45A through R, gives many tools for troubleshooting profile. There are three starting points to learn more about profile and defects. The first is the must have Ultimate Roll in Web Defect Troubleshooting Guide by Tappy Press. This is an encyclopedia of more than 500 defects and much, much more. The second is my must have 750 page web handling handbook. We have an entire chapter on material properties and measurements and Appendix T that would be helpful for quality control, troubleshooting, and web handling work. Finally, there is my award-winning and trademarked Web 101 class that has been taken by 5,000 people just like you. Here we will learn which material properties are needed for web handling work and why they are predictive. Thank you so very much for joining me in this Material Matters series. Stay tuned for the next clip where we will talk about a most important web property, width. If you have a topic you would like to hear about, let me know in the comment section below. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. Also, please consider supporting the work of this channel using the Patreon link below. See you next time.